Hi, this is episode 52 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Tuesdays, I help you prepare for coding job interviews. And today, I'm going to discuss how single table inheritance works. I picked single table inheritance as a topic because I was specifically asked about it in the last programming interview that I had. On an initial note, Single table inheritance is commonly referred to with the acronym STI. Some common questions related to STI are, how does it even work? When would be a good time to use single table inheritance? Or how do you implement single table inheritance? Those are some of the key things that usually you'd be asked in a coding interview. Before we walk through how to implement STI in an application, let's discuss what it is at a high level. The dead simple explanation or definition of STI is that single table inheritance is a technique that enables developers to extend a data model without having to create another database table. Don't worry if that's clear as mud. We'll walk through a practical example of how it works and that should clarify the concept of single table inheritance. Let's imagine that you're building a social networking application. In the app, you have two types of users, standard users and admin users. If you were to create a database table for both user types, it would look something like this. This would be a really poor way to build an application. As you can see, the attributes and methods are very similar. This means that each time you make a change to the users in the application, you'll most likely need to make changes to both database tables. This type of code design will eventually lead to a project that will be difficult to manage. At its core, this design breaks the don't repeat yourself or dry principle that's vital in object-oriented programming development. But don't worry, single table inheritance is here to save our coding sins. STI lets us create an abstract class that we can call user. From that point, we can create a subclass of our user class called standard user. As you can see, our standard user only contains the attributes and methods that are specific to regular users. This is possible by leveraging object-oriented inheritance, which I discussed a few weeks ago. If you review the principles of inheritance, you'll remember that inherited classes have access to the data and behavior of their parent classes. In our example, this means that the standard user class will have all of the attributes, such as first name and password, even though it's not declared in the class itself. Now we can create another subclass of user called admin user, though it contain the data and attributes specific to admins. One of the keys for single table inheritance to work lies in the type attribute in the parent user class. If we would create an admin user using code such as this, it will let us create a record in the user database table that looks like this. Notice how the admin user value automatically got inserted into the type column. This is how the user class table knows what child class the user actually belongs to. In order to create a standard user, we can use similar code. I stored this user in a variable, and as you can see here, a standard user has access to the slug generator method. But the admin user doesn't have access to the same method because it was declared in the standard user subclass. Therefore, it gives a no method error, as it should. I hope that you now understand how single table inheritance can be used in an application development type environment. In the show notes, I've included a link to the tutorial where I walk through a step-by-step -step guide on how STI can be applied in a real world application. So please feel free to reference it for your further understanding. And good luck with the coding interview.